everyone and uh, welcome to today's session. My name is uh, Amin uh, Amrani and I am an image processing engineer at uh, Sales Group France. So this webinar will cover uh, the topic of uh, access to Earth observation data. Uh, before uh, starting, please know that you can input your questions by clicking the Q&R button down there and uh, uh, we will read the questions later and uh, uh, answer them. So uh, you can see here uh, the schedule of, uh, of the session. Uh, so we'll start with the uh, presentation of the EO Africa R&D facility. Uh, that will be done by uh, Mr. Mehdi uh, Farnagi from the University of Twente. Uh, then we will uh, talk about uh, the Copernicus data. What are the Copernicus data and how can we uh, access them? We will uh, afterwards uh, uh, see how we can download the satellite data directly from the original provider on the uh, provider's website and uh, how to download the, the same data, but this time using a DIAS. We will define the DIAS and uh, see how we can use it to uh, download uh, the data uh, directly on the Innovation Lab and use the uh, cloud computing. We'll end with a small conclusion and go to the Q&A session. So now I uh, leave the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Madi Farnagi, who will present the first section related to the EU Africa R&D uh, facility. So Mehdi, I let you share your screen. Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to this webinar. My name is Mati Farnaki and uh, I'm an assistant professor at the GIP or GIP department, uh, faculty ITC at the University of Twente. Uh, and uh, I will briefly uh, explain and discuss a little bit about EO Africa and the facility, uh, describe what is this project, and then hand it over uh, to Amina for the rest of the webinar. Okay, uh, what is EO Africa? EO Africa stands for uh, African Framework for Research, Innovation, Communities, Application and Application, Building an African-European R&D Partnership. Uh, it's an activity by ESA, uh, which uh, train at uh, fostering an African-European R&D partnership. Uh, one of the activities under EO Africa is EO Africa R&D facility. It's a project, it's a flagship initiative of EO Africa, and uh, its main goal is to support an African-European collaboration. It's an activity that complements other activities uh, such as uh, GMES and Africa, uh, and uh, the aim is to enable an active research community and creative innovation processes for continuous development of Earth's observation capabilities in Africa. This project uh, is being implemented by six partners. Uh, we have uh, ITC faculty uh, of the University of Toronto as the leader of the project, also, we have CS Group France, CS Group Fran uh, Romania, we have CERCO, TUVN, and VITO. Uh, All together, these six partners are going to implement uh, EO Africa R&D facility in three years. And uh, in fact, EO Africa R&D facility uh, is an activity uh, after previous successful experience of ESA in Tiger Initiative. In Tiger Initiative, ESA uh, provided capacity building uh, related to air observation data uh, and analysis in Africa uh, through research uh, in the last 15 years. And now we have EO Africa R&D facility, uh, which uh, continue in the same rail uh, as Tiger Initiative. In the first three years, your Africa R&D facility is going to have uh, three main activities. The first one, in the first activity, we are providing a cloud computing Earth observation data analysis environment. Uh, the idea is to support researchers in accessing and utilizing Earth observation data. Uh, 
So we have developed a cloud computing platform. The name of the cloud computing platform is Innovation Lab. And then we are providing this uh, cloud computing pro uh, platform to African and European researchers to be able to uh, do joint uh, research on using Earth observation data in Africa. We are also offering 30 research projects, uh, not only funding, but also technical support uh, to address uh, African European research challenges, mainly related to water scarcity and food, uh, food security in Africa. We have had the first uh, round of the projects, uh, project call, and now we are in the selection process. So soon we will announce the winners of, uh, of, of the research calls, and then they start working on the first uh, round of projects, sorry. And then the last uh, activity is establishing a digital capacity development platform. So it's the capacity development activities of the project. Uh, we, we, we call the whole activity, we, we, we want to generate a space academy, we call it the space academy. And then under this space academy, because we are providing face-to-face -face courses, online courses, webinars, and uh, also MOOCs. This webinar is the second webinar under uh, these capacity development activities. Okay, so now you know uh, the main objectives of EO Africa R&D facility. Uh, I hand it over uh, back to Amine, and then he will talk about uh, accessing to Earth observation data, and he will uh, demonstrate everything on the Innovation Lab, the cloud computing platform that is developed in uh, that has been developed in uh, EO Africa R&D facility project. Okay, thank you, Amine. Over to you. We will uh, start by uh, explaining uh, the, how to uh, what are the Copernicus data and how uh, we can uh, access uh, them. So uh, the Copernicus data is a flagship program of the European Union. Uh, its uh, role is to uh, monitor the earth, uh, the environment, the ecosystem, and uh, prepare for uh, crisis, uh, security risks, and uh, it's uh, uh, one of the main uh, one of the main uh, uh, points is uh, is that it is uh, free and uh, everybody can access this data. They nobody is charged charged for accessing this data because it uh, it is a tool for economic development and uh, uh, is uh, very uh, important to to the EU. Uh, so the Copernicus data have uh, broad uh, benefits. So here you can see all of uh, the, the, the benefits uh, that uh, we can have. So for example, on uh, the agriculture uh, theme, it can, uh, it can be interesting for uh, monitoring uh, soil moisture, as an example, surface temperature. Uh, it can address the issues of uh, climate change. Uh, for example, observing uh, sea level rise ice melting by using all the uh, the uh, satellite data it can be used also for the health uh, sector monitoring air quality um, security and defense of course uh, transport uh, development and cooperation and uh, and so on and the one of uh, the interesting aspects of the Copernicus program is all the uh, Sentinel missions, which are uh, the satellites that have been launched by ESA. Uh, and the goal of the uh, Sentinel program is to replace all the older Earth, Earth observation missions, which have uh, retired, such as the uh, ER, uh, ERS and uh, the Envisat missions, uh, and uh, some others that are currently nearing the end of uh, their uh, uh, of their lifespan. So uh, this Sentinel uh, program will ensure a continuity of uh, data so that there are no gaps in uh, ongoing studies. Uh, each mission it's, uh, each mi mission focuses on a different aspect of Earth observation. Uh, you have, uh, for example, Sentinel-1 for uh, uh, the radar imaging 
polar orbiting. Uh, you have the Sentinel-2 uh, images for uh, optical images and also for uh, multispectral and uh, infrared uh, uh, imaging. And uh, each one of them has a, a, a certain uh, aspect uh, of interest, uh, oceanic uh, land monitoring and, uh, and so on. And uh, these missions are planned to give uh, Earth observation data up until 2030. Uh, so as some satellites reach their end of life, they are replaced with fresh identical satellites to do the same job until 2030. Uh, for example, you have the uh, Sentinel-1C, uh, which, which will be a follow-on uh, of the other satellites uh, uh, when uh, they are uh, not working anymore. And uh, the same for Sentinel-2 and the others. And the, the goal is to reach 2030 with uh, data uh, every day on, uh, that are of interest to, to, to the community. So let's talk a little bit about how to access this uh, data. So there are different ways to, uh, to access data, uh, meaning directly, and to download them on your computer. So I'll show you an example afterwards on how to do that on the Sentinel Data Hub, which is uh, the first one that you can see on uh, the left. But there is also the Copernicus Space Component Data Access Portal. Uh, it requires a quite tedious regist registration process to access it, so I won't recommend that one for now. And there is also this uh, UMETCAST service proposed by UMETSAT, which it also needs a yearly fee so it is a paying service. I won't recommend, recommend it for the moment either, uh, especially since the creation of the, uh, the DSs that we will see afterwards. So let's focus on the Sentinel Data Hub uh, for the moment. So the Sentinel Data Hub has all these uh, uh, possibilities. We can search and browse the Sentinel data, visual, visualize them before uh, downloading, downloading them and uh, uh, some uh, some other uh, some other stuff that you can uh, use and that I will show you uh, on the demo afterwards. And uh, so there is this Sentinel Hub that contains the raw uh, Sentinel uh, satellite data, but you can have also uh, the products that are classified by uh, themes. So the, this is why it, there is this uh, thematic Copernicus services, each one which uh, with its uh, portal. And uh, many products can be extracted from the raw satellite imagery and be classified by team afterwards. So you can find, find each thematic service portal. Uh, in each one of them, you can find sub products of the satellite uh, bulk products. Uh, and uh, in contrast with Sentinel Hub, where you will find the whole product in bulk in a zip file, for example. So we'll see each one of the of the portals uh, very quickly for each thematic uh, service here land monitoring for example we find uh, all products from various satellites that are related to land monitoring for example digital elevation models extracted from uh, from satellites uh, uh, of uh, sentinel or uh, before so so you can go on land.copernicus.eu works the same for all the other portals and uh, browse the uh, land related uh, products. Uh, you have uh, the same for the uh, marine monitoring. So you have the cmems.copernicus.eu when you can reach uh, uh, up to uh, 140 products uh, on many uh, subjects related to, to, to the marine uh, monitoring. Uh, same with the atmosphere monitoring uh, um, portal. Same for the climate change, the emergency management also. Uh, so now that we have taken a look on all the Copernicus portals, uh, general and uh, thematic, let's have a look on the private and national sector initiatives. Uh, so we can talk here about, uh, for example, the PEPS platform developed by the, the CNES, which is the French Space Agency. So it's, uh, it's quite the same as, as, uh, as the, uh, the Sentinel portal, 
but uh, it allows to also to do some cloud computing on uh, the Sentinel data when you use uh, PEPs, as they have uh, up to seven petabytes of uh, data stored uh, that you can uh, download and, and cloud compute. We have also other private initiatives as the Catapult satellite applications in the UK, which provides uh, more business oriented services using the uh, Sentinel uh, data. Um, we can also uh, talk about the uh, Geostar platform developed by uh, my colleagues at CS, CS Group that provides uh, services using the Sentinel data. And uh, finally, you can also have a look at the Google Earth uh, engine, uh, but uh, uh, maybe things can get a bit more complicated to handle with uh, the Google Earth uh, engine. And I will, uh, uh, and this is why we will talk about the uh, the innovation lab of uh, your Africa. So now let's uh, go to the uh, um, demo section. Uh, with uh, uh, I will and I will show you how to download satellite data data directly from the original provider. So. So here you can see uh, the uh, website sci-hub.copernicus.eu where uh, you can uh, you you have sentinel one two and three satellite data that can be uh, retrieved directly on your computer so for the aim of this demo we'll choose a, a single product of uh, reference for the whole uh, demo and uh, it is a product of the uh, siwa oasis uh, region in egypt and uh, we will choose also the date of uh, July 13, uh, 2021. Uh, it's for getting a sunny, cloudless image of the Egyptian uh, summer. It, can it contains also sand and water, which offers a nice uh, contrast for our optical imagery. And uh, thus, it makes an interesting product for, for a demo. So we click here on the small uh, dotted uh, square to select a region of interest. Uh, so we can select this area on the image, and then we can go here to uh, enter the, uh, the uh, options and the parameters of the search. So we tick the box Mission, Mission Sentinel-2, because uh, that's the product that we have chosen. It's a Sentinel-2 product. And uh, we, we choose also the L1C product, which is the raw product, not treated yet, because we also have this L2A level, which contains some more complex products, but let's, let's uh, choose the L1C. And here, the sensing date, we're looking for the sensing date, and we can choose the July 13, 2021. And same, same for the end date. So here at the end, once we have entered all the parameters of uh, interest, uh, you could have uh, chosen, for example, to add some cloud cover percentage if you want to uh, eliminate all the images that uh, do not uh, uh, contain too much, uh, too much uh, uh, clouds, too many clouds. And we can click on the search button here at the end. So when you click the search button, uh, it is uh, supposed to uh, show you all the related uh, uh, all the related uh, products that are found. So here, this product is uh, the one that uh, is of interest to us. So if you click on the small eye icon here, you can load uh, the parameters of the products. You can see a quick look image, which is a an uh, RGB image uh, of uh, the product. You can see some of the properties and you can also navigate inside the product to go and see uh, the, uh, the, the, all the images that uh, you can find or the auxiliary data and uh, the metadata and everything. And you can uh, download uh, a product. Uh, for example, we can download the true color image 
and download will start on your computer directly. So here there is no cloud computing at all, but you can download an, an image and use your uh, QGIS or Snap to, to show it. Uh, the next part will be uh, uh, to, 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 to use the, the DIAS, a DIAS uh, platform to download the data. So uh, what is a, a DIAS? So I'll try and show you uh, this. A DIAS is uh, a service that provides a centralized access to Copernicus Sentinel data, as well to, as to the information products for the six operational services of Copernicus that I have uh, shown, land, uh, uh, climate, and so on. So uh, the DIAS that we have selected for the Innovation Lab activities is Claudias, but there are five uh, DIASs available, uh, so Blue, Wikio, Onda, and Mundi. Uh, so if we go on the uh, Creodias website, we can uh, log in, which uh, I would advise you to do. I would advise you to register on Creodias for all uh, your Africa R&D activities. And uh, once you have uh, logged in, let's uh, uh, search for our products on the finder of Creodias. So we click on the tools EO finder here. And you have access to this, uh, to this uh, screen that, uh, that looks like uh, the one from the uh, Sentinel Hub. Uh, so what is the difference? The difference here is that you have access to all the data. Now uh, it's uh, the DIAS centralizes all the uh, Copernicus data in one place where you can uh, choose whatever satellite uh, data you want, and you will have access to it. So here we, uh, again, choose some Sentinel-2. We use our date of uh, July 2021, like this. Observe date, and uh, we choose the processing level of level 1C, as we said. And after we can use this polygon selector here to uh, select uh, the region of interest, which is the Siwa Oasis region. If we click the search button here at the end, we can see the same tile that has been selected and that can be downloaded or uh, can browse uh, uh, on the inside to, to find the, your, uh, the images of interest. So again, it is possible to download the product and store it on your computer using a DIAS. Uh, and uh, very important, uh, this can be done with any Copernicus data. I have chosen the Sentinel-2 image for uh, for the example, but it can, do, it can be done for any other Sentinel uh, data or for any, any other Copernicus data or service. So uh, maybe uh, at this point, some of you might ask, why would we need an innovation lab? Is not the data perfectly accessible this way? Well, the thing is the main benefit of the cloud computing uh, services is that not only it allows the user to access uh, the data, but uh, also to download it remotely on the cloud service storage unit. Uh, so if I go back to my, to my Jupyter notebook here, let's, let's say that, for example, we have a, a file that is very large to download. Uh, uh, if, the, if the file is very large, it will be uh, downloaded very quickly uh, if you use the, the cloud. And this because the internet connection speed uh, will be that of the remote server. Uh, also, there will be no need to import the data anywhere to process it. And uh, you'll be able to use scripts directly on, uh, on the product. 
So it's in this context that the Innovation Lab has chosen to provide access to the Jupyter Lab uh, environment. Um, uh, Jupyter Lab is an uh, interactive de development environment. We're working with uh, notebooks, uh, code, and data. And it has full support for the Jupyter Notebooks, which we are using for this theme. The Jupyter Notebooks are uh, an open source web app uh, that uh, you can use to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualizations, and text. So here uh, is an example of a Jupyter Notebook. So as you can see, uh, you can enter text or augmented text. You can insert images. And you have also these code cells here that we will see uh, later. So now that I have my Jupyter uh, environment, uh, so I, I, um, I remind you that this, this particular uh, Jupyter notebook is accessible uh, on your shared folder if you have access to the Innovation Lab under the name Data Access. And it contains the instructions and the code that will allow us to download the data directly on the virtual machines, uh, the virtual machine associated to your instance of the innovation lab. So this time we will use CreoDS again, as we did here, uh, but this time we will use it in a different way by calling uh, a, a script generated by uh, a library called EODAC. Uh, uh, so for more info on the EODAG uh, Python library, I refer you to the documentation that you can easily find on the internet. EODAG is a library that is embedded in the Jupyter environment as a plugin. And uh, it, it allows to set uh, a provider uh, as, as the, the provider of data as the source and download specific products, but we will come to that. Note that the uh, EODAC, uh, pro, uh, the EODAC uh, library is an open source project. So first, let's execute this first uh, uh, cell that uh, uh, will set the environment variables related to Creodias credentials. And in this last line, you can manually choose where the product will be stored. Uh, so in the Jupyter environment, a cell is this area that can be interpreted as text or code, depending on uh, what you choose uh, here. So this cell is a code cell. Uh, once executed, it will be interpreted by the Python kernel of the uh, Jupyter. It is exactly as if you run, uh, you run it on a Python interpreter. So you can, uh, as I said, you can choose the nature, nature of the cell here. Uh, at the top, uh, text, markdown, or code. Markdown is a kind of uh, augmented text to add uh, colors, create titles, and stuff. Uh, it can also be used to display images. But for now, we will go with uh, the code part. So if we click the, the play button here, it will uh, execute the cell. And by putting the credentials, the EODAC plugin is now connected to uh, Creodias. So now let's use the plugin to find the Sentinel-2 product we have located uh, earlier, the Sentinel-2 tile near the Oasis in, uh, in Egypt. To do that, we click on the tab on the left of the screen here. And here, so we are using the EODAC plugin instead of, uh, of the uh, viewer of, uh, of Creodias. So we, again, the same, we can choose the Sentinel-2 L1C uh, products. We can choose the start and end date of our, uh, of our search or query. Maybe we can use it between 12 and 14 of July, 2021. And we can use this polygon tool here to uh, select the uh, region of interest. 
So if you if you know some additional parameters, you can add them here. For example, the uh, which sentinel uh, which sentinel uh, uh, satellite. At the, at the end, we click on uh, search, and again you can see our uh, tile, see its properties, uh, and once the tile of interest is detected, we can click apply here. When we click the apply uh, button, it will generate a, uh, a cell, code cell, as I have uh, shown you, that stores the product and its properties uh, and uh, will make it ready to be downloaded or uh, streamed. So uh, this is the, the tile that we have generated. So I have another one I have uh, prepared before because we have to add this following line. So everything is in the notebook. You will find it on uh, your shared folder. We have to inform EODAC which, provide, which provider to use. So here we said that we are using the Creodias provider. So we have to uh, tell uh, the uh, provider we have to tell, to tell uh, EODAC that we have chosen Creodias. We execute this cell. And uh, afterwards, the, we have this third cell that will show us the products that were selected. Uh, so it is useful if you have uh, selected many products. Here, as expected, we have just one product that has been selected. So you will see only one product, but it is useful to list all the products that have been that have been uh, catched by uh, by EODAC. <coughs> so now we have uh, two methods uh, that can be followed. We can whether download the whole product, or we can stream one image of the product. So I'll show you the, the both uh, methods. And let's start with the uh, full product download part. So this next cell uh, will allow us to uh, download the, the whole product directly by using this uh, download function, function of the uh, EODAC object. Uh, if, I click, if I click on the run button here, it will start downloading the product and it will store it on my, uh, uh, my innovation lab, uh, my innovation lab uh, storage unit. So we wait, wait for it to, to be uh, downloaded. As you can see, the, uh, the, the speed of download is uh, high because uh, there is a direct connection between the, uh, the server and, uh, and the provider. So your internet connection is not in, is not implicated in here. And once the product is downloaded, we will use this next cell to show, for example, the quick look image, the uh, true color image that is included in the product. And here you can see it. At the same time, you know that the product is stored. So if I go here on the product downloads, I can see that the product has been downloaded seconds ago. And uh, I have set this at the beginning of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, notebook. I said to put the products once downloaded in the products downloads folder. So that's all for the download part. Now let's go to the, uh, um, to the streaming of the product uh, part. So I hope that you can all see the benefits of using the Python scripts on the Jupyter to download the data compared to the, uh, to the direct download uh, on your computer. Because here the data is downloaded on your virtual machine. It's downloaded on the Innovation Lab virtual machine. And uh, it's also downloaded at servers internet speed and we can use afterwards the image. We don't have to upload if anything. The uh, uh, products can be used directly to uh, perform uh, calculations on it 
and do scientific studies on it. So now the next part, the next part allows us to stream the data without downloading the whole product. Sentinel-2 products, for example, it's a complex product that contains many uh, JPEG images, as you can see here. This is what a, uh, the inside of a, a, a Sentinel-2 product looks like. So you have auxiliary data, and you have uh, image data, and you have also a lot of other data that can be, uh, that can be of interest. But imagine that you have uh, you just need one band of the image and you don't want to download the whole bulky file. It will be a pity to download the whole product. So that's what, uh, why the streaming is here. The first piece of code here uh, instantiates the streaming functionality of EODAC. Uh, so we, we, we run it. And uh, in uh, this next cell, let's uh, suppose we only want one band of the product, which is the band 10. So uh, executing this cell would uh, stream the image, meaning that it's, uh, source, it stores the image in a variable without downloading the whole product. Only band 10 will be stored as a variable and the product will not be downloaded. So here, if I click here, the band 10 is stored in an array. And the, this last cell will plot uh, the band 10. So here we have, we, we got the band 10 without downloading the products. Uh, so in other courses, you will see how these products can be used to do and perform all types of calculations and produce uh, scientific results out of them. Uh, so that's all about the Jupyter uh, notebook. Maybe we can talk about the, uh, the uh, VRE or the virtual uh, desktop. So you all will have access to this virtual desktop here. Uh, that is connected to the Jupyter environment. It's connected to the store tunes of the Jupyter in, uh, environment. Here, if I go on the uh, cloud computing webinar where I've run my uh, notebook, products, downloads, when I have stored my files, I can find the product that I have downloaded. So here, if I go on image data, I can see all the bands of Sentinel-2 that I have downloaded. And if I click on one of them, it will open the image with, uh, for example, here, the Monteverdi uh, software that is pre-installed. So you have a Snap, Monteverdi, QGIS that are pre-installed in the uh, virtual environment. And you can do all sorts of, uh, of studies uh, using your images. You can also use the QGIS software very popular. And if, or if you open the, the QG software, you can put a, an image here. So it will take a little bit of time. And put many products here. And to add some other layers. Uh, so this way you can uh, uh, study your uh, images. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. Uh, you can use this way to show different layers of, uh, of bands of the same image and to, to, to do your uh, calculations or scientific work on, uh, on the images. 
so we have come to the end of the demo part of uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, I will now be pleased to answer your uh, question. So please go ahead. So I will take a look at the uh, question and answers uh, section. I see that uh, Mahdi have, uh, has already answered some of your uh, questions, but uh, do not hesitate so, to, uh, to add some other questions uh, if you have. I'll be glad to, to answer them. So of course, uh, I see that some people are asking for the materials and uh, Mehdi has already given you a link. Uh, the previous webinar, I think that it, uh, uh, I guess it is already available on the uh, EU Africa R&D uh, YouTube channel. So uh, I can see another question from uh, uh, Jospin. Uh, should we have a very strong background in Python to use the cloud computing platform? Not at all. Uh, the uh, cloud computing platform comes with uh, some uh, already uh, commented lines of Python. And uh, Python is quite a, a simple uh, uh, language to use. You can find its uh, documentation, very high quality documentation on the Python tree uh, official website. So each line is uh, explained. And uh, for the uh, notebooks that are uh, uh, available, uh, they can be executed without, uh, without uh, changing the code. But uh, for sure, if you want to do some more complex uh, uh, work, uh, uh, a background on, uh, on, uh, on computer programming would be, would be a, a good thing, of course. I think that uh, the Python language is quite simple one to, to use and uh, you can use the documentation to uh, progress uh, at the same time while, uh, while using your uh, cloud computing platform. Uh, so Quentin is asking, can we provide the links and requir requirements to access the Innovation Lab for this course? Uh, I think that uh, uh, Madi will uh, share the, uh, the, uh, the information and the link uh, so you can uh, access the Innovation Lab. Um, let me just uh, clarify one thing. Yes. Uh, innovation lab uh, actually is not now open for everyone it, it's like this in the project we are going to provide access uh, to uh, to those uh, who apply for uh, our research calls and get the funding okay so that's the first uh, group of people who have access to the innovation lab the second group of people are uh, selected participants of uh, our capacity development activities. Mainly, we are talking about those who uh, participate in our online courses and face-to-face -face courses, okay? But uh, in, uh, I, I'm not saying that we cannot provide you with uh, access to the Innovation Lab if you are not attending uh, in, our, in our online courses. Please send your request through our website and then uh, we, we can have, uh, we, we can check your request and see if, if we can provide you with support and access to the innovation. Uh, 
Oh, okay, and then uh, one of the participants is asking about the results of the grants. Uh, actually, uh, after this webinar, I'm attending and uh, one of the uh, sessions uh, in which we are uh, discussing the selection process, uh, the selection of the uh, research funds. Uh, you will hear uh, soon from us. Okay, I, I can just say that. The next session for applying is uh, the next round uh, will be next year. Uh, we will probably open the call uh, uh, in December again, uh, like this round. Uh, and then uh, you can apply for it. But uh, I, I would suggest that you keep, a lot, uh, keep an eye on our website and, and then uh, you will see the announcements. I mean, uh, um, Miki is asking, I hope you would include web VTTS uh, when you make the resource material available. Yes, uh, Miki, can you, uh, uh, can you tell us what web VTTS is? Can you clarify your questions, please? I oh, mean, not the uh, subtitles, maybe. Yeah, um, uh, about the subtitles, uh, we are publishing our uh, videos, our YouTube uh, channel. So over there, you can just turn the subtitle on and you'll see them. Yes, the Google subtitles now are quite performant, but uh, if, uh, if some of you think that it is uh, important. We can uh, we can add them manually. I think that the the YouTube channel does the job for now, especially in these last years. Maybe a question for you, Mati, from uh, Mansour. Yes, uh, in fact, in our research calls, one of the one of the requirements of applying for our research call is like this: that uh, we want a tandem of researchers, one from Africa at least, and one from Europe. Okay, so we always in, want uh, people to apply uh, in a tandem for a research call. Uh, so uh, that's about the research call and also about the project. The partners of pro projects uh, are all uh, European uh, organizations and universities, but we have, uh, for example, steering committee and in that steering committee, we have uh, African African uh, uh, scholars in our, uh, on our team. So yeah, the African parts are playing a, a big role over there. Yes, please, please do not, do not hesitate to ask some other questions if you have also on the technical stuff on the uh, image processing uh, area. Uh, the, so Jospen is asking uh, whether there will be tutorials on how to use the platform. Maybe Mati, you can talk about the Moodle platform. Yes. Uh, uh, as, I, uh, as I said, we have this 
capacity development activities uh, on their own uh, as one of the main activities of our, our project. And in these capacity development activities, we have online courses, we have uh, face to face courses, we have webinars, and we have MOOC. Uh, the tutorials that you, you are searching for uh, are, will be published mainly under uh, these activities. For example, uh, when we have online courses, then there will be some tutorials about using the innovation lab, and then those tutorials will be published uh, after, after having the course. So everything will be published uh, openly to everyone. So then people can use it. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is that our friend, uh, our friends or our, our partner, CS France, who is developing the innovation lab, who has developed and now maintaining the develop uh, the innovation lab, uh, has uh, prepared a complete uh, user guide for the system. So whenever someone log into the innovation lab, uh, they have access to that uh, documentation, and then they can easily read the documentation, see how they can use. Uh, I, I would also like to, to add another thing. Uh, if you look at, uh, if uh, you, uh, get access to our innovation lab, you, you can see that it's based on uh, Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Hub. So it's a very user-friendly environment. As soon as you log into the platform, you can see where you can find, uh, you can start uh, coding, where you can, uh, let's say, open a desktop application like QGIS, or where you can open a terminal and start uh, executing uh, Linux commands over there. And so on and so forth. So it's a, it's a very user friendly environment. And then uh, I would say most of the activities uh, you can just uh, start doing them intuitively. Yeah, Amina is uh, showing the innovation lab. I mean, maybe you yes. can add. Yeah, something. maybe we can, I, can, I can add five minutes about the innovation lab. So here is the uh, Jupyter environment. Uh, uh, launcher, so the welcome page. Uh, you can start a notebook from scratch uh, if you click in here. You can, uh, so it is a Python interpreter, you can type any uh, Python command as long as it is code. You will have, uh, you will have the, your Python commands working. You can also add some text using the markdown or raw text. So that's for the notebook. And uh, you can also add images as I, I have shown before. Uh, you have access also to the terminal. So it's a terminal prompt as if you were on your Linux computer uh, and, you can, uh, and you can do whatever can be done uh, on it. You can uh, install new libraries using, for example, the pip to install uh, new Python libraries or um, all the stuff that you can do on your Linux. And uh, you also have uh, another launcher, the desktop, as I have uh, show, shown you before. If you click on this uh, desktop, you can have your uh, the uh, virtual desktop of, of, of the same uh, of the same uh, virtual machine. Uh, also, you have a file browser that allows you to browse uh, uh, browse into your uh, your files and uh, copy them, download the folders, and so on. Create new folders, new files, and so on. So, it's, as as uh, as Madi was uh, saying, it's very friendly. It's a very friendly environment. You can also create uh, Python files from scratch. And compile them as well as .pi files. So I hope it uh, it answers your question. Uh, yes, maybe I will answer it. Uh, so the knowledge in data analysis, uh, yes, it is an advantage. So um we uh, uh in the Moodle course uh, i know that uh, some uh, notebooks that are uh, that uh, 
treat the data analysis uh, parts and uh, on the libraries like uh, Panda and uh, uh, NumPy and uh, this, uh, this kind of libraries, uh, you will have a lot of examples. And it begins from, uh, from really uh, the, the basics. You will have exercises and uh, the solution to the exercises on the, the notebooks. Uh, I don't know exactly in which, uh, in which context uh, they will be available. Maybe Mati uh, knows if it will be available to everyone or maybe to yes, the yes. people. Yes, yes uh, if you uh, register yourself in New Africa uh, R&D facility website, uh, then as soon as you log in into your uh, profile, then you will uh, see a, a page, uh, let's say a sidebar on the right, and then on the side uh, on that side sidebar you can get access to for example our uh, MOOCs uh, environment and then in the MOOC environment you would see a lot of uh, let's say courses provided for you uh, and then you can start uh, reading and using them okay so just register in our website and then as soon as you register and log in to your web, uh, to your uh, account then you will see that on the right side you can get access to the MOOC. Yes, and uh, so you will have a lot of uh, notebooks, especially uh, prepared for uh, introduction as an introduction to data analysis. Uh, you will uh, be using uh, some. Uh, you, you will have the download parts as I have shown you in this notebook, which will allow you to download some products, and then using these products to do some data analysis on them. And it starts from very simple stuff and uh, uh, it goes uh, uh, crescendo. Uh, uh, it becomes more difficult in the, in the, in the end of the notebook. You will have access to the solutions with some parts when you can do, where you can do exercises, try and run the cells where you have to fill uh, some, some variables and stuff and see if you are uh, actually uh, uh, learning, uh, learning uh, correctly. In addition to that, uh, I want to add one thing. Uh, you, you see, we are uh, we just started uh, our online courses, so uh, it's like this that you can go to our website and we are announcing different on online courses now and then, and then you can register for those courses. Uh, okay, and then when you register, there will be there always is a, a selection process. We select some of the some of the applicants, and then we they participate in the courses. Now, uh, uh, right now, we are uh, the registration is open for two of our online courses. The first one is cloud computing and algorithms for Earth observation analysis, and then the second one is principle of uh, ad, uh, and advances in Earth observation. Okay, so if if you are interested, just register there for one of the courses or wait for the later courses, you'll see them and then register for them. And then uh, you, you get the chance to work, to learn a bit more and also to work with, uh, with, with the innovation lab. Okay, so uh, maybe last uh, opportunity to ask a question, then we end. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for uh, attending and uh, hope to see you later. Goodbye. Thank you very much and goodbye. Mm -hmm.